Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure this book is in front of you when you're working with me. Uh, today is our day number 13 and we are on page number 86. Yesterday on day number 12 we did the first four problems that you see on page number 86. We did the first four problems that you see in the first column and today we'll take care of the other four problems on the right hand column. Yesterday we did the left hand column. Let's begin. The very first problem as you see there uh, is already on the blackboard. Don't ask me why I had the urge to specify the left hand column and the right hand column. Sometimes I have those urges. The very first problem as you can see is already on the blackboard, number 79. We are told that we have six numbers, 4, 3, 14, 7, 10 and unknown number, unknown, unknown quantity x. We are told that the range of these six, these six numbers is 12. And our job is to simply figure out the difference between the greatest possible value of x and the smallest possible value that we can have for the x, the difference between the two. Let's begin, shall we? Let's begin. So, first thing, in order to figure out the range, we have to first put them in order. So we have a 3 here, we have a 3, we have a 4, then we have a 7, then we have a 10, and then we have a 14. And there are only two possibilities. One possibility is that the x goes on this end. If x went on that end, given the fact that the range is 12, and this guy is 3, the range, in order for the range to be 12, this would have to be 15. So that's the greatest possible value of, of x, which is 15. Another possibility is that instead of going on that end, it goes on this end. So if x happens to fall here, then we are no longer dealing with this guy, we are no longer dealing with this guy, we are dealing with 14. And the range has to be 12, we are told, the range has to be 12. If this is 14, this would have to be 2. If that's 2, that's the smallest possible value. There you go. The difference between the two is 13. That's our answer. The difference between the greatest possible value of x and the least possible value of x is 13. Number 80. I did not give you a chance at all to pause the video. I hope you did that. Always pause the video as soon as I finish putting the problem on the blackboard and do it yourself first. Next one, same thing, do it yourself first. Number 80, we are told what number is 108 more than two thirds of itself. What number is 108 more than two thirds of itself? As you can clearly see, it's a very straightforward, simple linear equation. Do it yourself. Okay, here we go. I hope you paused the video and did it yourself. What number, that's our unknown, is, means equals, 108 more, 108, 108 more, more than two-thirds of itself. Two-thirds of itself. That's all it is. That's all we have to do. Subtract two-thirds from both sides and we'll find that one-third x, one-third x would have to equal 108, which means x must be 108 times 3, which is 324. Very straightforward, very simple. Number 81. Number 81. Number 81 tells us that we are dealing with a service provider. What kind of service they provide, that's neither here nor there. We are not interested in any of that. We are dealing with a service provider. A service provider charges us, charges us D dollars for the first 50 hours. 
and after that we have to pay 40 cents for each additional 30 minutes. That's the part to keep in mind. This is for each additional 30 minutes. That's where you have to pay attention. It is not for each additional hour. It is for each additional half an hour we have to pay 40 cents. The question simply is, what is the cost? What's the cost of, this, of their service for X hours? And we are told that X is more than 50, obviously. Go ahead, do it yourself. So for the first 50 hours, we're going to pay X do uh, D dollars. And then anything above 50, so we're using X hours, and X we are told is more than 50, so anything above 50, which means X minus 50. For example, if X happens to be 55, then 55 minus 50 for the additional 5 hours, we will have to pay 40 cents each half an hour. Therefore, for each hour, we have to do it like this. And the problem is that this is represented in dollars, and this is in cents. That won't do it. That won't do it. We have to convert this into cents. Instead of writing it like 40 cents times 2, we have to write it as 0.4 times 2 dollars. That's all. And we don't actually need a dollar sign in the expression itself. That's it. That's our answer. It's simply d plus 0.8 times x minus 50. That's what we're looking for. Number 82. In number 82, we are told that one kilometer is approximately 6.625 miles. That is given to us. The question simply is, 53 kilometers is approximately how many miles? That's all it is. That's all we have to figure out. The question is very long-winded in the problem. If they go on and on and on, but that is the nub of the problem. And if you don't know what nub means, look it up and learn it. Nub means the gist of something, the essence, the core, the main idea, the central point. The problem itself, as it is stated in the, in the book, is mumbo jumbo mumbo jumbo, but that's the nub. That's what they're looking for. So, all you have to do is take 53, and multiply it by 0 0.625 and that will give us that will give us our answer that should give us our answer but what we're going to do instead of multiplying a decimal and so forth instead of, instead of 0 0.625 let's pretend that it is six and a quarter in other words move the decimal point to here and then when we finish doing our work we'll just move it back to one place in other words, we are going to first multiply this by 10 and we are going to divide our answer by 10. So let's do that. So I am going to write this as, we are going to write this as 53 times 6 and a quarter and let's just see what happens. Shall we? Let's begin. 50 times 6 is 300, 6 times 3 is 18 and now we have to figure out what is quarter of 53. What is the quarter of 53? Well, if you don't want to do it in one shot, take, take your time. Start with 40. 40 is, if you had 40, 40, a quarter of 40 would have been 10. It's not 40, it's not 44, it's not 48, it's not 52, but we are up to 52. 40, 44, 48, 52, that's 13. The fact that it is 53 and not 52, don't worry about that. So that's 1, carry 1, that's 3, and that's 3. There you go. But it's not, the answer is not 331, it's 33.1. That's your answer. And that's what it says in the book. In the answer choices, you'll see one answer choice that says 33. That was the end of that page. Since we did only four problems yesterday in one column, and therefore I wanted to finish this page, I don't want to start a new page again. We'll meet again tomorrow, and we'll pick up from page number 87. And we'll continue our journey. Okay? Bye now.